Welcome back to the stage of history, Epic 7 fans, for yet another how to play video. My name is Pat, and in this one, we'll be talking about the Avenger of the Uchiha clan himself, Remnant Violet. As with all of the how to play videos here on this channel, I'll try to go super in depth and cover almost everything you could want to know about the character, including things like stats, skills, possible end game equipment builds, world arena matchup spreads, and then on top of that, because it's a Moonlight 5 star, I will give you my opinion on whether or not it is still worth it to pull. So if you want to check out any of those things, stay tuned. And with the introduction out of the way, let's move right on to Remnant Violet stats. Remnant Violet is a dark thief of the Leo Zodiac symbol. He shares a stat line with Vildred, Arbiter Vildred, and Blue Kisei. Taking a look at his stats, he has 1,283 attack, 5,138 health, 116 speed, 522 defense, 23% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 5% dual attack chance, and no effectiveness or effect resistance. I very much like this stat line for a 5 star thief, largely because it is not a Scorpio Zodiac symbol. If you watched any of my videos, you know how much I hate that stat line. It has very good attack on this Zodiac symbol, as well as above average speed at 116 and some starting critical hit chance. I really also like the 522 defense on this thief because usually the most common stat line being Scorpio, they don't have defense. You literally can't give them good defense and therefore the character becomes incredibly inflexible as far as build options. It just becomes super, super difficult for them to get any amount of bulk and thus are very capable of being one-shotted. That's not the case with Remnant Violet due to his skills as well as the increased defense. As a bit of trivia before moving on, in the English dub of Epic 7, Remnant Violet is voiced by Brandon Bales, who you can also hear obviously as regular Violet, but also Ball and Sage Ball. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Remnant Violet is voiced by Nobuhiko Okamoto, who you can hear as Bakugo in My Hero Academia, Nishinoya from Haikyuu, and Garfiel from ReZero. Remnant Violet's S1 is Sword Flash. You acquire one focus upon using it. It has a 1x attack multiplier. Additionally, it has a 60 to 75% chance to blind the target for one turn. Normally, a 1x attack multiplier feels honestly kind of subpar at this point. That used to be the average, but it feels like a lot of the Moonlight damage dealers lately seem to have 1.2x multipliers. We can excuse that on Remnant Violet because his base attack is so high, and on top of that, that blind debuff, it really does matter. That lowers their hit chance by 50%, and this character also is most likely always going to have a dodge buff, which means if you land the blind, your opponent can't actually hit this character, which is super, super good. His signature skill is the passive S2, Concentration. At the start of battle and at the end of each of his turns, he has a 70 to 100% chance to gain a dodge buff for one turn. If you do not know how dodge works in this game, if you are successful in dodging an attack, that move deals no critical hit damage. So it's essentially reducing the incoming damage by a ton as most damage dealers are playing something like 250 to 300% critical hit damage. If you were to dodge a 300 critical hit damage character, you're essentially reducing the damage that you're taking by one third. That is massive. Additionally, if a move misses, it cannot land any debuffs unless it has some kind of special property, such as the seal on Touch of Chaos for Archdemon Shadow. So yeah, dodge is a really powerful mechanic, and I'm sure many of you watching this video have experienced this firsthand, as both Remnant Violet and Violet have been in the meta for quite some time in PvP. On top of this, whenever you successfully evade an attack with Remnant Violet, he will gain one focus. If he is attacked while having five focus, it will consume all of it and use his S3 Massacre on a random enemy. That move Massacre right here is a single a target attack that has a six to seven turn cooldown depending on Mulligora and you acquire three souls when using it. It increases the attack of Remnant Violet for two turns before he deals the damage. That is very, very important. You will always have attack buff when you are using this move unless you have the unbuffable status on the character. The move has a 1.3x attack multiplier and it penetrates 50% of the target's defense. So this move hits really, really hard.
When you consider that you will always have an attack buff for this move and that it has 50% defense penetration and that Remnant Violet has almost 1300 base attack, you realize that this move is going to chunk or outright kill even the tankiest characters in Epic 7 if they're not properly protected. There's a reason that this move has a six turn cooldown at max Malagora because it's almost a death sentence to whoever it hits if the Rylet is built with really strong gear. Keep in mind that this move is also what you're going to be countering with thanks to the S2 passive concentration. This move is one of the most terrifying single target attacks in the entire game in my opinion and most of the time when you get hit by it from a good Rylet at least, that character is probably dead or at least very 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 close to it. Remnant Violet Soulburn extends the duration of the attack buff that he gets from Massacre by one turn. I would put this in the category of use it if he's the last man standing because you don't really have any other you know, use for your souls. It only costs 10 souls. That's not a lot, but I would probably still not really use it. I think there are just better uses for your actual souls. When it comes to Malagora priorities, max the passive concentration first. When I first got Remnant Violet, I decided not to max concentration in favor of the S1 and S3, and I learned very quickly that this character is a sitting duck without evasion. If you do not have that dodge buff up consistently, any damage zone in the game can most likely kill him in one, maybe two hits. So yeah, you really need this thing. It's really that important. You should not be taking this character into any serious PvP matches as long as this thing is not 100%. So max that first. After that, max the S3 Massacre, as this is the move that strikes fear into the hearts of your opponents. It can outright kill or come very close to killing most characters in the game, assuming they don't have a ton of damage mitigation. It's also the move you're going to be countering with, and you want those counters to be impactful. After that, max S1. It's still a fine move, it's just not as good or as important as maxing the S2 or S3. But since this is a damage dealer and one that most people play as a hard carry, you really have no excuse to not have this character at plus 15. Remnant Violet is a very high risk, high reward damage dealer. His kit is incredibly simplistic, synergistic, and highly self-sufficient. Being a dark element is also a massive boon to this hero. He essentially can be picked in a huge range of scenarios, and he doesn't really care too much about who is on his team supporting him. This is as you would expect from a character that looks like a stereotypical anime lone wolf. Rylet simply wants to get into the fray and knock out or at least severely weaken a target with his S3 Massacre, then ask that you kindly leave him alone. He's essentially just hoping that he dodges any retaliation or that his opponents leave him alone long enough for another Massacre, whether that's through six turns passing for the cooldown to come back or them triggering the counter component of his S2 passive, Concentration. Having a simplistic character though does come with some massive drawbacks. If you recall from How to Play Sanya, I talked about this drawback in that the devs assume since the character is hyper focused and linear in one aspect that they expect your stats to be sky high. Remnant Violet's gear requirements are amongst the most demanding of any damage dealer in the game and you can really feel the caliber of another player's gear by how hard his S3 hits. If you're a player with a lot of resources at your disposal, Remnant Violet is one of the best characters in the game in my opinion to dump your duplicates and slates into. The additional crit hit chance he gets from his imprints feels like it's a necessity to hit the really insane thresholds that this character is capable of. In this video I have tried my best to keep the gear requirements on his equipment as low as I can while still making him feel threatening so if you have better gear than what I'm going to show you by all means as always go for it. The first build that we're going to be talking about is a lifesteal build. The logic for lifesteal is fairly simple. Dodging attacks drastically reduces the incoming damage this character takes, which means that he is incredibly difficult to one-shot. However, he still is fairly squishy, so he can only dodge three or four attacks before he actually dies. Since the character has high damage output, he will be able to heal back most of the damage he takes thanks to the lifesteal set. This means that the only real ways for your opponent to beat Remnant Violet are to remove his dodge buff in some way, seal him, or, most likely, just get lucky. So that's why we're playing Lifesteal set, and we are going to also be using a Penetration set. This is to maximize the damage that this character deals. You are simply just trying to 
kill a character as fast as you possibly can with his S3 Massacre. Just hit as hard as we possibly can. So I think that is the best option. For other sets, you can use Immunity if you do not have Penetration, or you can even use Crit Set, whichever one you have available. But Penetration is absolutely the strongest. Looking at the desired stats, we want 3,800 attack or better. I feel like for a lot of people, you should be able to get at least 3,800 attack on this character. He really doesn't do a ton unless he has high attack. So I think you want to prioritize the attack stat first and foremost before anything else. For the defense, you want over 1,000. If you can get higher, that's great. I've seen 1,100 and 1,200 defense on this character. He has low base defense. It's not the worst for a thief, but... In general, Thieves have very terrible defense, so if you can get over a 1,000, that's awesome. The health is 11k or higher. I've seen 12k, I've seen 13k, I've even seen 14k Remnant Violets. Whatever you can get, that's great. The more bulk he has, the longer he's going to stay on the board. It's going to take them more hits to kill him. If he has that good combination of defense and health, even if they get lucky, if he somehow survives with like even like 5% health, he can make a miraculous comeback and use the Lifesteal set to basically heal to full. For speed, I feel like 185 is the lowest that I would want to go. And I feel like for most players, uh, the 180 range is fairly attainable with a lot of the other stats that we have listed here. It's only when you're trying to push him for like 200 or 210 speed. I feel like for a lot of players that you start to suffer in both damage and bulk. So I've set the floor a bit lower in the 180s. So if you can get that, that's great. 100% critical hit chance. This is probably the hardest stat, I think, to increase on the character. He just... It's just so difficult to get 100% critical hit chance these days with a lot of other stuff, especially if you're on either immunity or pen set. You really feel not having the critical hit chance set on the character. This is why I was saying imprints are so, so important on this character. If you can spare to get imprints in any way, I highly recommend that you do so if you're very serious about playing this character long term. For critical hit damage, I've set it at 260. I feel like that 3800 attack, 260 critical hit damage is a pretty good threshold for this character. If you can beef it up without sacrificing too many other stats, then by all means, you are welcome to do so. Taking a look at the right side gear, we are going to be on a crit damage necklace, an attack percentage ring, and speed boots. This is simply because we're trying to do as much damage as we can, as fast as we can, without sacrificing too many other stats. The artifact is Shepherd of the Hollow, I have listed here, because it is by far the best artifact on the character. It gives you an additional 20% chance to dodge, which when coupled with his dodge buff, gives you a 70% chance to dodge all incoming attacks. Additionally, unlike Moonlight Dreamblade, which is the budget option if you do not have Shepherd of the Hollow, it gives increased damage, which stacks with the increased attack that he gets from Massacre. Moonlight Dreamblade is great because it gives dodge chance, but that attack buff that it gives is redundant with the S3 Massacre, so you're not really getting any bonus damage out of playing Moonlight Dreamblade. That's why Shepherd of the Hollow is the best option. Taking a look at the per piece average, you want 17% attack, 13% crit hit chance, some level of bulk, and then some level of speed and crit damage. I have here listed for each, we have 7% defense, 9% health, and then we have 8% critical hit damage and roughly 5 speed average per piece. I am a standard slash turn 2 player by nature. I don't really play aggressively unless I really need to. I don't really enjoy aggressive or cleave style composition. So for me, the lifesteal build we just talked about works A-OK. -okay. But for you, if you're more of an aggressive player, more of a cleave oriented player, there is another build which is the speed build that may be better for you. I think that both of these builds are roughly the same in terms of effectiveness. Again, it depends on your playstyle. Both of them are very powerful. So again, I leave that to you to, based on your playstyle, how you like to play, which one you want to use. For this speed build, we are going to be on speed penetration for the same reasons we're on penetration on the lifesteal set. The character just is there to deal damage, so why wouldn't you take the set that gives you the most amount of damage? If you don't have penetration, you can use a crit hit chance set in the interim until you farm one. Looking at the desired stats, we want 3,800 attack or more. Ideally, you would like 4K because this build is really trying to wrap things up in a hurry. You're trying to win the game in the first three turn cycles because he usually doesn't really live much longer than that the defense is 832 that is his base with just an i90 body 
The health is 8,389. That is, again, the base with an I-90 helmet and a plus 30 artifact. For the speed, I have it as 250 because I feel like this is attainable for most players. This is the slowest that I would go on this kind of speedy assassin build. I have seen as high as 270 or 280 in the Emperor and Legend tiers. So if you can go much higher than this without sacrificing, I encourage you to do so. I just tried to keep the stat lines, again, as low as I possibly can in order to help players actually use this character, get this character usable. It's more important to me that you have a usable, playable character at all ranks than you know just showing you the upper echelon and it feels unattainable to you. Next up, we have 100% critical hit chance. We're a damage dealer. We just want to be as consistent as we possibly can. Critical hit damage is 260. Again, this is the lowest I'd probably go. Actually, probably closer to 250, but 260 I think is a good starting point for a lot of players. And if you can shoot for like 280 or 290, that would be great as well. Taking a look at the right side, nothing has really changed. We're still just trying to be a damage dealer and go as fast as we possibly can. So the right side accessories haven't changed. What has changed, however, is the artifact here. I still have it as Shepherd of the Hollow, and I still think this is probably the best one. However, I think Violet Talisman, which has the same stats as Shepherd of the Hollow, is another viable alternative. And the speed set can really leverage this, unlike the lifesteal set. The Violet Talisman gives you an increase to damage and dodge chance the longer the fight goes on. Well, if Remnant Violet is fast enough, he will be able to cycle around, and by his second or even third turn, he will be hitting like an absolute truck, and it will really synergize well with him trying to clean up in a hurry. The first attack will probably do comparable or more damage than Shepherd of the Hollow, and it only gets better from there. So yeah, I really like the synergy between the speed build and Violet Talisman. Moonlight Dreamblade is the budget option if you simply do not have one of these other five-star artifacts. Looking at the per piece average, it's 17% attack, 13% critical hit chance. Remember, guys, get those imprints in to lower that average per piece on this. Then we have 8% critical hit damage and 12 speed. Remnant Violet really is an army of one. He's one of the most self-sufficient damage dealers in all of Epic 7, so he really doesn't need that much when it comes to teammates. That said, he does really suffer against unbuffable as a status effect, so you compare him with heroes such as Troublemaker Crozet, Amelia and Maid Chloe. Obviously, all three of these heroes have cleanses that can get rid of unbuffable and they provide him quite a bit of sustain or mitigation. So I really, really like these characters as well. Standard fair mitigation sources such as Fallen Cecilia are great as well because the barriers plus his dodge makes him very, very, very difficult to kill. And then I'd be remiss to not talk about how great he is with Conqueror Lilius. Conqueror Lilius gives you the vigor buff, which makes him a lot harder to kill and hit quite a bit harder. And also her S1 has amazing synergy with Remnant Violet. Honestly, any hero that can provide you with dual attacks has amazing synergy with him because it just gives you those focus stacks, which allows you to get that S3 counter massacre much more frequently. Remnant Violet actually has a fair number of good matchups overall. Pretty much anything that's not a bad matchup I think he has an amazing matchup against. The ones that I think are the best for him, though, are those forced AoE characters, such as Bellion and Seaside Bologna. They will just allow you to get a bunch of focus stacks when you dodge, and that'll mean a ton of S3 massacre counters and that much damage, that many counters going out. Very few teams can survive that for very long unless they get really, really lucky. Speaking of lucky, the standard composition characters you normally see, such as Fallen Cecilia or like Ruel of Light, Mediator Coeric, and sometimes even Apocalypse Ravi, they're also pretty decent matchups for Remnant Violet because again, they usually only have one damage dealer on the team. They're trying to protect it with a character like Fallen Cecilia, Coeric, or Ruel, and they just have to get lucky. They only really get one chance each rotation to actually hit Violet, and you have a pretty good chance of dodging it. And if you do, then they're going to have a hard time because he just puts out so much damage and he has the ability to either one shot or almost one shot most heroes in this game. So I feel like because of the level of damage that you're putting out, it is in your favor to play against those compositions. He's just a really good solid tank buster overall. He just has a number of very good matchups except for the bad ones, which we'll talk about now. All right, break out your notepad. There's quite a number of ones we have to talk about here in bad matchups. Aside from the ones I'm listing here, though, your matchups are pretty good across the board, but all of these ones, and there are a lot of them, they're all pretty bad for you, so keep those in mind. The first up is Angel of Light Angelica. Her S3 gives you unbuffable, which is the worst thing you can have happen to your Remnant Violet because then he can no longer dodge, and since he is a squishy thief, 
It is very easy for your opponent to kill him in one hit. So obviously Angel of Light Angelica is bad as well. Briar Witch Asaria, same exact thing. In fact, some would argue she's even worse because she has increased hit chance on you and she can actually do the damage that can actually kill the Remnant Violet. So she's another one to avoid. Conqueror Lilius, obviously very, very prevalent hero in the current metagame. Her S3 removes one turn from each buff and obviously you only have a one turn dodge buff so she turns off your dodge she can provoke lock you and obviously she can set up with her s1 some damage to be able to take out remnant violet in one hit solitaria of the snow is a long forgotten hero but she's super good against anyone that has focus she can potentially stun your remnant violet and on top of that she'll make it so that he will never be able to use his s3 counter proc which is obviously one of the main reasons to play Remnant Violet is that punishing counter attack. Archdemon Shadow is the one that we covered in a recent how to play video. Because her S1 Touch of Chaos applies seal before it deals the damage, you have zero chance to actually dodge it, which means she will simply put seal on your Remnant Violet, wait for him to take his next turn, and then he becomes a sitting duck. So that's not good either. Falconer Clurry is another one. She is much faster than Remnant Violet for the most part, and her S3 can lock him down and completely remove the dodge buff for him. And even if he somehow manages to take a turn and get the dodge buff back up, that defense break on him with having such low HP and just okay defense means that he's probably going to die even if he actually dodges an attack. Melissa is an old one that a lot of people used to use as a Remnant Violet counter. You don't really see her uh, very often, I think a lot of the like lower and intermediate players still use her or people who are just diehard Melissa fans. She's not a super great character, uh, but she is still one that is very, very strong against Remnant Violet. If she manages to go ahead of you and uses her Soul Burn, you're most likely going to die. So keep an eye out for that. Elfelt is another one that is very similar to Melissa. It is one where she will basically get rid of all of your buffs, whether she hits you or not on any of her moves. And that can essentially set you up for a potential one shot from someone else on her actual team. To round out the rest of it, there is a bunch of newer characters that have increased hit chance that are basically designed to beat green violet. But as an extension, they end up beating remnant violet as well because, you know, he's also a dodge character. So you also want to avoid characters such as all rounder Wanda, Phyllis as well as Zahak. All three of these characters just really can't miss against you, or at least they have a very low chance to miss against you. And that's obviously not good because your character is very squishy if he does not actually dodge, and it's basically going to be the end of the character if it actually hits. All right, so now let's talk about whether or not is it worth it to pull Remnant Violet, especially since that is a question that a lot of you have asked me in the comments as well as on Discord. Yes, I still think it is worth it to pull Remnant Violet, but with a condition. If you've watched the video up to this point and not just skip to the very end to see if it's worth it to pull, you've hopefully realized my opinions on the character throughout the skills and build section, as well as the gear that is demanded by this character in the build section. You need really good gear. If you do not have hard-hitting, well-rounded lifesteal gear or really well-rounded hard-hitting speed gear, this character is going to fall really flat for you. So if you're a newer player or an intermediate player that doesn't have fast damage dealing gear or, again, good lifesteal gear, this character is not going to really do anything for you until you farm that actual gear. So you might be better off holding for a more impactful character. I think that the closest comparison to this character is Spectre Tenebria. Spectre Tenebria is a dark damage dealer that is a safe pick that can hard carry a game and in a lot of meta games is one of the best characters you can draft in the entire game. Like the current meta as of the recording of this video, Spectre is an insane damage dealer in the current format. Remnant Violet is very much the same way. He is a safe dark pick with good gear requirements or I should say hard gear requirements, but he can hard carry a game and he is one of the top damage dealing picks. Just like Spectre though, there are times where Spectre's not really that good. She doesn't really see any play. The same is true for Remnant Violet. Remnant Violet right now is seeing more play, I think, than any other time since his release. He is being played quite a lot in high-end arena because he is just a powerful, generically safe pick that can kill a lot of characters, especially because mitigation Arius characters 
are not super relevant right now. So even despite the fact that there is a ton of hard counters and bad matchups for this character, like we talked about in the previous section, he's still good. Um, and I feel that he's going to be that way for a very long time. He's going to be a premier dark single target damage dealer. He's going to be one of the best safe picks you can basically pick in any damage dealing scenario. So again, if you have the gear and the resources, I see very little reason for you to not grab this character. The only other reason I think to not grab him would be if you're interested in a potential rerun or the newest hero, which is Lionheart Sermia. I did an entire uh, first thoughts and initial impressions video on her, which I will link down in this video's description for you to check out the specifics. But the TLDR of it for the most part is that Sermia is most likely going to fall flat, but there is a chance that she could be actually a meta pick and incredibly powerful depending on how spammable her S3 is and how good her multipliers are. We got those multipliers this morning and the S1 is about as good, if not slightly worse than designer Lilibet. So nothing super crazy, nothing crazy to write home about, but the S3 has the potential to be very, very powerful. Somebody did some quick maths on Reddit. I think it was like seven to 10 K damage on a 1200 defense hero on similar build paths to other defensive scaling heroes. So yeah, she could be really good. She could be a meta relevant hero. Um, we just don't know. If you really like Sermia and you want to take the gamble, then by all means go for her. But again, Remnant Violet is like Spectre Tenebria, where it's just a really powerful damage dealer that I think it just fades in and out. And as long as you have the gear and the resources to actually use him well, I think he is worth your Mystic Metals and you probably should pick him up. So that is going to conclude it for the how to play video on Remnant Violet. Hopefully this video was of some help to you. You can be of some help to me by remembering to subscribe and like the video helps the channel out here a ton. And let me know down in the comments below if you disagree or I forgot something. And if you want to check out more how to play videos in this style, there will be a playlist on your screen now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye now.